Hi, this is John Sifferman from physicalliving.com. This is a video review of the kettle stack, which is an adjustable kettlebell. I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons and trying to help you decide if it's something worth investing in. Um, this review applies to all adjustable kettlebells, not just this particular brand. Um, basically just comparing this against a more traditional kettlebell. Um, <clears throat> if you want just a quick answer, because this is going to be a, a pretty thorough review, in general, I recommend against using any form of adjustable kettlebell. I think you are much better served by using a more traditional one, um, even if it means you can only buy one, one size. Um, so again, I recommend against using these in almost all cases. And if you'd like to know why, then you know, keep watching. So let's talk about the pros. What does this thing have going for it? Well, first, it's cheap. It's inexpensive compared to you know, a more traditional kettlebell. I mean, this is going to be about the same price if you buy it new as a very light pro-grade kettlebell or a really tiny iron kettlebell. Um, I mean, we're talking, you know, eight kilograms or, or less, right? Um, uh, the other, the other thing that it has going for it is that it is adjustable, and you know, I'll show you what I mean. When you buy this, you're basically buying the housing for these weight plates. You're not; they don't, it doesn't come with the weight plates. You get this handle, you get these fat or these flat plates here and a bolt that goes in the middle of these weight plates. So you basically buying this uh, weight plate holster with a uh, handle on it and you can attach various different sized weight plates to it. So I've got 35 pounds on this one right now which is roughly the equivalent of this 16 kilogram kettlebell. Um, so that is an advantage. You know if you you can start light and work your way up with just one kettle stack. Um, you know, that said, there, there are disadvantages to that, and, and there's even advantages to only having one weight with a kettlebell, um, but we won't get into that in this review. Um, so let's, let's talk about the disadvantages now. That's, that's really all that this thing has going for it. Um, it's cheap, and it is adjustable. Um, but as far as the disadvantages go, um, you know, given that it is cheap, it's kind of flimsy. You know, it's not something that's going to fall apart, you know, every time you use it. But this bolt here uh, needs to be tightened with an Allen wrench. And pretty much every time I've used it, and I used it for about three months when I first got it uh, several years ago. It's been collecting dust here for probably the last four or five years. Um, it was given to me by a friend who was really eager to get rid of it after he bought some, some real kettlebells. Um, but I used it for a few months. And I noticed that pretty much every workout, um, I would have to be constantly cranking on that Allen wrench to keep the bolt tight um, because it would just start loosening itself um, during most exercises. And you could say that it's just, you know, this particular case is just a data point. You know, your, your uh, experience may be different. Um, but <clears throat> you would think with such a simple design, they'd be able to produce something that stays tight over, over uh, several repetitions. Um, so, but, you know, that's not a terrible flaw, but the, the flaw that that presents is that it distracts you from the actual workout itself. You know, when you're, when you're doing an exercise, especially one where maybe the, the kettlebell is overhead, you know, the last thing that you want to be thinking about is, is a weight plate going to, you know, fall down and hit me in, in my noggin? <laughs> you know, is it really going to happen? Probably not. It's unlikely. And, of course, you can monitor that while you're doing it, like, you know, you're doing your, your snatches. You say, okay, you know, it's not falling out. You can keep an eye on it. But just the fact that you have that little thought in the back of your head, it's distracting. It's distracting you from your workout. When you're exercising, you want to be completely focused on what you're doing and not having to worry about your equipment malfunctioning. Um, so that's, that's one major disadvantage. I, I consider that a major disadvantage because it directly interferes with your performance because you're, you're second-guessing yourself. You're, you're not putting your full effort into your workout. The second major disadvantage is that it's just awkward to use in, in most of the, the traditional kettlebell lifts. You know, your conventional cleans, jerks, presses, push presses, jerk, or uh, long cycle clean and jerk, and snatch. Pretty much anything where the, the kettle stack is in rack position or overhead, it's very awkward. Um, you know, let, me just, let me just show you what I mean here. When this is in rack position, I've got these weight plates here resting on my forearm. And the only reason they're resting there is because I put it there. You know, uh, the fact that this is really kind of jingly and you have all that movement, 
It could land on the outside of your forearm. It could land right on your forearm. It could land right on the inside of your forearm. And that's, that's really awkward on the wrist. You know, but that can happen with very subtle differences in how you perform the exercise. That can happen. It can land in a strange position. So it's, it's awkward to use. And every repetition is different. So it makes it really hard to practice good technique and adapt to it over time. Because there's really no way to make it efficient. Um, the second thing is that since these weights are able to roll, when you're, when you're doing an exercise, when you like clean that up, for instance, you know, let me just do some swings here. You know, you can even, you can hear the weight plate spinning. Especially if you do like a snatch, guess what's slowing those weight plates down? Yeah, the skin on your arm. So it's, it's really uncomfortable, especially after you know, 10, 20 repetitions. If you're planning on doing any high repetition lifting with this, you, you won't. You, you just won't because it's going to be so awful, you would just quit early. You know, you can't do it with this because it's just too uncomfortable. Rips the hair out, stretches the skin, and, you know, again, you know, you could say, oh, you're just being a sissy, you just need to endure the pain. But I'm, I'm interested in performance. You know, I want you to be able to do as much work as you possibly can. If you're being distracted, by pain, and if you're actually like literally, you know, doing micro damage to your arm, then you're not going to be able to perform at your peak. Um, the other thing, and, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that you're probably not interested in, you know, professional kettlebell sport, but this handle is is not necessarily optimal either. Just the the diameter, the shape. There's no way to get an efficient grip on it. So your your grip, there's going to be a lot of torque on your wrist strain on your wrist joint, um, you know, your grip is going to fatigue prematurely compared to if you had like a pro grade kettlebell where you can uh, align your grip in a certain way where you can, you know, your grip won't fatigue prematurely. So, so those are the, the two major disadvantages. Now, obviously some exercises aren't going to be impacted necessarily by the awkwardness. If you're just doing swings, you know, just a, a regular one-handed swing, then it doesn't matter that it's not aligned properly, right? Because it's not really coming in contact with your body. But if you're doing anything in rack position or overhead, then you're going to wish you had a normal cover. Um, so who is this right for? Um, if you're just interested in like dipping your foot into the pond of kettlebell training, maybe you've never trained with a kettlebell before, and you don't have much money to invest, and you're really not sure if you're going to like it, then it might be worth trying to find one of these. Um, and I recommend trying to find it used. Trust me, a lot of people will be trying to get rid of them. <laughs> um, you know, 15, 20 bucks might be worth it just to get your feet wet and figure out if you really like it. Um, but apart from that, for any other purpose, if you have fitness goals, if you have weight loss goals, if you have any athletic goals, especially if you're planning on getting into kettlebell sport down the road, you would be much better served by using a more traditional kettlebell, whether it's a, a pro-grade kettlebell like this one here, or an iron cast kettlebell like a Russian kettlebell. I'm sorry I don't have one here to, uh, to show you. I just don't own any. Um, you know, you'll be much better served by that. So that's basically the, the lowdown. Um, you know, again, don't really recommend this, can't really endorse it, but you know, I'll admit it does uh, serve a niche um, a, a very narrow niche, and if that's you, then it might be right for you. Now, if you are a first-time kettlebell buyer and you'd like to learn a little bit more, um, maybe you'd like to learn the difference between a pro-grade kettlebell and an iron cast kettlebell and get some you know, first-time kettlebell buyer questions answered. I actually put together a special report um, in 2010 just answering all those questions. Um, and I also did some market research to see where you could find the, uh, the cheapest kettlebells, both pro grade ones and iron cast ones. Um, and I, I think I found five or six of the, the leading distributors here in the United States and put all of their, their prices, including shipping, into a spreadsheet. And that's included in the report too if you want to do a little market research. You know, you might be able to, to figure out who the, the best top one or two companies would be to order from. Um, so you can find that at physicalliving.com you can just search for, you know, pro-grade kettlebell or Russian kettlebell. You know, almost anything with kettlebell will probably uh, help you find it. 
So, this is John Sifferman from physicalliving.com. Hope this was uh, beneficial, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Take care.